This is an old personal computer power supply. For any of you who are like me who have been tinkering with computers for a while, you probably have a, a number of these lying around in your spare parts. The problem with this power supply is all of the power output cables look like this. These are called 4-pin Molex connectors, and they were widely used before the days of SATA hard drives and optical drives. Molex is the company that originally made these connectors. They make lots of other connectors, but this has simply come to be known as the Molex connector. Now, prior to 2005 or so, all hard drives looked like this. And this is the uh, so-called IDE connector, standing for Integrated Drive Electronics, also known as Parallel ATA, Advanced Technology Adapter. And they were connected to the motherboard with cables that looked like this, these flat ribbon cables. And there are 40 pins in this connector. And we've got that four pin receptacle for power. Then in 2005, there is this rapid switchover to connectors that look like this. This is the serial ATA. Some people just say SATA. And the data cable is this four connector SATA data cable. And this is what the power connector looks like. Now, for some reason, optical drives took a little longer to catch up. I'm not quite sure why, but so in 2005, all the computers went to SATA hard drives, but they, they kept using the IDE data cable and the Molex power socket. That arrangement continued for about two years. Then by 2007, pretty much all of the optical drives had also switched over to SATA data and power connectors. So beginning in 2005, we had these hybrid motherboards that had both IDE connectors, and SATA connectors. And that arrangement persisted to probably 2008 or 2009. After 2009, you only saw SATA connectors, except for some backwardly compatible upgrade motherboards. So I have several of these old power supplies that have been cannibalized out of other systems over the years. But if these are the only connectors it has, it really isn't going to do me any good with a modern computer. So is there any way that I can still use this power supply in a modern computer? Well, you can get these adapters like this, and they plug into one of your Molex connectors, and voila, you've got two SATA power connectors. And this does work. I have done this in the past. The problem is the following. First of all, you have an additional connector, and I have found that these often fail right here. I'm not sure why, but when I plug one of these in, I don't know, the connectors just aren't that good, but oftentimes, you know, your hard drive or optical drive just stops working, and then you sort of wiggle this connector and it starts working again. The other problem is it's missing a power line. Now, it's pretty much a universal that black means ground, red means plus 5 volts, and yellow means plus 12 volts. And so that continues on into your SATA connectors. Unfortunately, a true SATA connector also has a third connector, which is normally orange in color. And this connector is a plus 3.3 volts. As we can see on our little adapter here, it just doesn't have it. So if one of your peripherals requires plus 3.3 volts, this is not going to work. One possible solution is to take one of these connectors and perhaps cut it off and splice it in and then run an extra wire. And some, some people have done that. Uh, and that, that would work. Now, in my case, I just happen to have some of these power supplies. Just in my own circumstance, I just happen to have acquired some of these old power supplies that went into the uh, Hewlett Packard DC7800 small form factor computers. Now you can see the small form factor power supply is a proprietary shape and design. I can't put it in any other computer except one of those. This is to the DC7800 and this is a computer from 2008. The market for these old power supplies is pretty limited. You can buy them on eBay for like 10 bucks. I have several of these power supplies that have failed. Uh, they are exceptionally difficult to troubleshoot. 
And of course, you'll never be able to find a schematic for the thing. And so uh, after expending a little bit of time on it, I decided to give up and I'm just going to cannibalize it for parts. Well, one of the parts it has is this nice SATA cable. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove this SATA power cable from this broken power supply. And we're going to splice it into our old but still good power supply. I've gone ahead and removed the tops off of these two power supplies. This is the old one that we need to add the cable to, and this is the, the broken one that we're going to take the cable from. And it's a simple matter of just following the colors back to where they solder in. Now we will have to break these little ties here in order to separate this cable from the rest, and then follow it back to where it solders in and just desolder it and pull it out. And on the receiving power supply, we can just follow it back where these plug in and we will just add our wires to it and we will just solder in the new cable just matching up the colors red for red yellow for yellow orange for orange and so forth I do notice on this old power supply we do have a swollen capacitor right there that's going to have to be replaced as well okay starting with the donor power supply going ahead and remove the screws holding the board into the case and I've removed all the little twist ties connecting this cable to all the other cables. Okay, so it's it solders into some of these connectors right here. Just a matter of figuring out which ones they are. Like a plate of spaghetti here. It'll take me a little while to trace them all out. It's a bit difficult in this tangled mess of connectors to figure out what's what, but using my ohmmeter between the connector and the various pins here, I'm able to figure out which one of these solder points goes to this cable. So I will desolder those one by one. Just keeping a little pressure on it, applying some heat, and out it comes. Here's our 5-volt line. Okay, we'll try the 12-volt line here. Oh, it's really stuck in there. Wow. Okay, out it comes. Two wires stuck together. We'll have to separate those. The 3.3-volt. Our two ground lines are connected here. I'm going to put a little extra solder on here to lower that melting temperature. It seems ironic to add solder to remove solder, but that is the best way to do it. Grab the wires and tug. Apply some heat. They're really in there very snug. All right, there they go. Okay, we've got this cable now completely separated. And now we have to figure out a way to solder that into our old but still good power supply. Now here's our recipient power supply. And we've got to get this cable in here somehow. Okay, I've, I've taken that board out. I've unscrewed it and moved it out so I can work on it a little better. Notice this thing claims to be a 500 watt power supply. Boy, you look at this, this wimpy looking circuit board, those little wimpy little capacitors. I sincerely doubt that this completely unbranded power supply is truly 500 watts. I think that's what we call an exaggeration. First thing is I went ahead and removed this blown capacitor. I've actually worked on this power supply in the past. Several of these capacitors have already been replaced. Here is our recipient power supply board flipped upside down to look at the underside. And we can see some things here. This giant solder pad here for lack of a better term this is ground and you can see we have a lot of wires that have been soldered through here but we actually have some holes here these are holes where wires could go but there aren't any wires there now we could use these over here this pad here is five volts and we have an empty hole and over here this is the 3.3 volts we have an empty hole this, this pad here is a 12 volt. We don't have any empty holes here. Now I've tried getting some of these wires to fit through these holes. These holes are just slightly too small for these to go through smoothly. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a very tiny drill bit and I'm going to drill some of these holes just a little bit bigger. Okay, well I've taken my little old drill and I've drilled a couple holes larger. You see that one is now larger. And that one and that one. So ground plus 3.3 plus 5. Now, if this is 12, what I did is I desoldered one of the wires and pulled it out. 
and then I drilled the hole larger so I can put the two wires. I'll put the original wire back in plus the new one. And hopefully that will all fit and that'll connect our new SATA cable to the board. Okay, now we've got all five of those wires soldered in. And we put the two yellow wires together through one hole there. 12 volts, 5 volts, 3.3 volts, and ground. And here they are. I've also replaced that bad capacitor. And now it's just a matter of putting it all back together again and seeing if it works. Now here we have it partially reassembled. And these are the cables that it came with. And here is our new cable. Three SATA hookups. Go ahead and put the top on and give it a test. We have our power supply now put into a test computer. And we have our transplanted SATA cable powering both the optical drive and the hard disk drive. And everything's running just fine. And over here we have uh, Windows 10 running on our computer. So it appears that we were successful. So our ancient Molex connector only has been brought back to life with a cable transplant and lives to power another computer. Now the way that I did this is probably the most difficult way to do it, but it's also the most thorough way to do it. Transplanting in a complete multi-connector SATA cable. But there are other ways to do this that are simpler. For example, you can take an old Molex cable like this and you can actually splice in SATA connectors and you can achieve sort of the same effect you know with or without adding a 3.3 volt line. In my experience so far pretty much all the peripherals I've run into didn't utilize 3.3 volts but I'm sure sooner or later I'll run into one. But anyway there are there are there is more than one way to do this job. This is the most complete and most thorough way but as you can see, there's quite a bit involved. Again, we were successful and we have upgraded our, our old power supply to something we can use in the year 2020 and beyond. Another power supply that I'd like to upgrade. Now, in the case of this power supply, we already have one SATA cable with two connectors on it, but it also has three obsolete Molex cables on it with three Molex connectors on each one. That's a total of nine Molex connectors, none of which will probably ever get used again. So this will be a little different and a little easier than the other one. Rather than soldering all five of the wires from the new SATA cable to the board, I'm going to, I'm going to solder four of the five wires to the cut wires from the cable that I removed. That's easier than soldering to the board. And that still leaves the orange 3.3 volt that I have to solder to the board, but still, it's less work and we don't really need all of these old obsolete Molex cables. We can certainly do without one of them. In the case of this power supply, I took a shortcut. I actually cut out one of the obsolete Molex cables. I just, I just took wire cutters and just cut the wires. And here, that, here is that cable that was removed. Okay, and those are the cut ends of the wires. And in its place, I soldered in the SATA cable. And here's the cable that I soldered in. And it's got three connectors, plus a three and a half inch floppy drive connector on it. And here's how I did it. You can see, here's where I cut the wires from the old Molex cable and soldered on the wire to the new SATA cable. And there's a little bit of heat shrink there. And here's our 5 volt line, and here's our two ground lines, and here's our 12 volt line. Now, in the case of the 3.3 volt line, I actually soldered this one to the board. In the case of this power supply, we took a, a shorter method. Rather than soldering all five lines to someplace on the board, we soldered four out of the five lines to wires that had been cut removing an old line, and just solder them on that way. That's just, just a whole lot easier. Four of them. Now the fifth one, the orange 3.3 volt line, had to be soldered onto the board. But still, that's another way to add a SATA cable to an old power supply. 
So now I have two SATA cables coming off of this power supply. By sacrificing one of the obsolete and unlikely ever, ever to be used again Molex cables. And here that power supply is all put back together again. Two Molex cables and the two SATA cables. Another old power supply successfully upgraded will make it more usable for 2020 and beyond.